How's it going everyone? This is a free video from the coding interview course that I released earlier this year, Interview Espresso. This one's about binary trees. I hope you enjoy it. And if you wanna check out my course, there's uh, a ton more videos like this one. Welcome to the next overview video. In this one, we're saying goodbye to the linked list and hello to the binary tree. We can think of a linked list as the shallow end of data structures when there's a whole ocean out there. In fact, both the linked list and the binary tree are part of a family of node-based data structures. By now, we're quite familiar with creating list nodes with a value property and setting their next pointer. You might be surprised to hear this, but a ton of data structures have these very same components. That is a node containing a value property and one or more pointers so think of nodes as the bricks that we're using to build different quite literally structures so within the broad category of node-based data structures we have everything from graphs which can represent cities and the paths between them and taking this a step further we can think of getting from point a to b in any navigation service as following a pointer from node A to node B. And then we also have trees, which are different because they're hierarchical. That means nodes branch out in one direction with multiple pointers going from top to bottom. Most trees look more like a pyramid than a tree, but if you squint, you can see the tree if you flip it upside down. Let's get more precise. Trees expand in one direction, so that means no cycles. They're also made up of parents and children. These are relative terms for nodes and describe where they're located in relation to each other. And relative here means every parent can also be a child. Just think of a family tree. So here the node with value one would be a child of node three and a parent of nodes two and five. The one hard rule for trees is that every node can only have one parent, but it can have many children. So just think parent to children, one to many. Even within trees, there's so many different types. You've got heaps, which keep things in order as you add to them. You've got tries, which you can store words in to look them up easily. And the HTML on any page can be represented as a tree. And in fact, you can store anything in a tree with a hierarchical nature, that is parents and children. Now the title of this video is Binary Trees, and we've chosen to focus on them because they are a simple type of tree that probably has the most interview algorithms associated with it. Now each type of tree has a specific set of rules, and the main rule for a binary tree is that each node can have maximum two children, or two pointers. More specifically, every node can have either zero, one, or two children. And these children are represented in the interface of our node with the properties left and right. That is to say, left and right pointers. Comparing this to the linked list where we have a single dimension, dot next, dot next, dot next. Here we have two dimensions, left and right. Okay, time for a bit of vocabulary so we can talk about trees in more detail. Nodes and trees are still called nodes, but we'll refer to them as tree nodes or binary tree nodes instead of list nodes. We call the node at the top equivalent to the head of our list, the root of the tree. Remember, trees upside down, so the roots are at the top instead of the bottom. As you can probably imagine, having multiple paths to go down makes traversal an interesting challenge. On one hand, we could set an on pointer like we've been doing and choose to follow one path all the way to the end. When we reach the end or a node with no children, well, this node is called a leaf. If we take our leaf node and our root node and all the nodes in between that we went through to get here, well, this is called a branch. So you might hear variations of following an entire branch, following a path to the end, things like that when we talk about traversing through trees. More often than following one complete branch though, we'll want to look at every node in our tree, whether we're searching for something, modifying the values, pulling them out, or 
just doing any number of different things. So the important question becomes, what order do we look at our nodes in? The best answer is, it depends. And this question is actually at the core of a lot of binary tree problems. So as you can imagine, if we're processing every node in the tree in some way, whether that's as simple as just printing out each node's value, or something a bit more complex, we could choose to do this traversal iteratively with a while loop and an on pointer, or recursively using the call stack. So with the tree, and I know you love recursion, we're going to start seeing something called branching recursion, which means since every node can have more than one child, we can have more than one recursive call per stack frame. What our call stack ends up doing is branching out like this. But when you look at all the function calls after they return, the call stack is actually in the same shape as our tree, which makes sense because we're calling the function, whatever it is for each node one time. I'm intentionally staying generic here, but we're going to get into what the implications of this are and what exactly this looks like in code in the upcoming videos. Before we wrap this video up, I have to mention one more even specific type of tree that we're going to talk about in a few problems. This type of tree is a binary search tree. Note the binary search in binary search tree. The reason why it's called that is because like the binary search algorithm that uses a list or array, binary search trees, if they are balanced, also give us a log n search operation. Now, as far as what exactly balanced means, well, we've got a whole video dedicated to that coming up soon. So in addition to the rule of binary trees where you can have maximum two children left and right, binary search trees have to follow one additional specific rule. And that rule is this, every node's value must be more than its left child's value and less than its right child's value. So in this tree, three is more than one and less than five. So we can call this a valid binary search tree. Not only that simple rule, but this greater on the right, less on the left principle has to be true for the entire tree. Let me explain. If I put a node with value two as five's left child, our subtree with five and two passes. But unfortunately, we are breaking it within the greater context of the tree because it's down our right path and we can't have anything less than three down our right branch. And checking whether this condition is true for the whole tree is called validating the tree. And we have another whole video dedicated to that coming up soon. Now, if we know we do have a valid BST, the way we find something is by simply traversing towards the value we want. So if I wanted to see if the value eight was in our tree, then I'd set an on pointer and look at the value on each step, which would tell me where to go next. So in this example, well, eight is greater than our roots value three. So I know I'm going to want to search down the right path. I can keep doing this simple check over and over until I hit null. In this case, I attempt to go from five right again, but five has no right child. So we can safely say that eight is not in our tree. And this is assuming that our BST is valid. So just to recap, there are a ton of different node and pointer based data structures. A very common one of those is trees. And within trees, we have binary trees. Binary trees are very common in algorithms and they're actually not that different than a linked list. They both have a value property, but instead of a next property, a binary tree node has two pointers left and right which represent the left and right children. The node at the top that we're often passed in is referred to as the root. Then we can follow a root down a branch all the way to its leaf, a node with no children. Now the order we traverse this tree in is a whole topic of its own that we're gonna discuss in all the upcoming problems. Finally, there's a special type of binary tree called a binary search tree, which gives us certain guarantees if things are kept in a certain order. I'm going to leave it at that for now, but we will, again, talk about that a lot in a upcoming video. So this should cover your bare bones basics for binary trees. 
which are certainly a must-know data structure when you're going into interviews. Nothing to be afraid of though, they're just a linked list with an additional pointer. All that said, let's get into our tree algorithms starting right now.